Hey everyone, this is Samir here again and it's been a while I haven't recorded any videos and I just decided to give you an update since we already are steps away from getting our Canadian citizenship. I, I think last time when we were recording videos were it was when I we just arrived in Canada and we we're still trying to get a driver's license then uh, get a car, buy a house, uh, have a baby, uh, get the dog, you know, and all those things pass. Now, um, fast forward uh, four years almost, uh, I would say three and a half years, and we're almost steps away from getting our citizenship. So in this video, I will explain to you what are the steps to get a citizenship and what are the requirements and what are what is the timelines and how much it costs. So let's start from the fact that you have to be a PR holder and you have to stay in Canada for at least 1095 days in order to be eligible to apply for citizenship. Along with that, you have to submit three tax returns. So you have to uh, be present here at least three fiscal years where you submitted your tax returns. Even if you didn't make any income during that year, you still have to submit the tax return. Another requirement is um, since you already have your PR, your old uh, IELTS exam score is uh, still valid here. Uh, so it proves that you have the uh, enough language experience to get the citizenship. Uh, what does the application include? It includes, first of all, the application itself. It has, you have to attach two uh, passport photos. Uh, so those are um, those requirements for the photos. You can find them on Canada CA website. But most of the places where you take those photos, they already know um, it's, uh, the sizes and you just have to put the address and the name of the person in the back. Then you have to uh, pay the fee, fee is $630 per person. In our case, we had two people, so $1260. Uh, then you have to fill out the online physical calculator. Uh, it's also on Candace website. Uh, basically, it asks you when you first entered Canada, um, if you left to for vacation or for anything else, uh, what are those dates? So you have to put those. Those days are um, excluded from your um, physical stays in Canada. Uh, then you have um, personal ID. You have to attach your driver's license or PR card, a copy of your passport, of any foreign passport that you have, so from your uh, country where you're from. Um, and... Uh, that's pretty much it. So that's it. You apply, uh, you send this in, uh, all of these documents uh, with the application form, with the payment confirmation and the checklist that you submitted all these documents. And then you wait, right? So how long does the wait takes? In our case, uh, look, we applied on uh, March 17. So that's when we sent the form by mail. Um, and then you can also do now online applications, but that's uh, at that time, we didn't know about the online. So we just sent it. By regular mail and they got delivered on March 25th then we didn't hear anything back from them until June 14th that's when they emailed us that look uh, we checked your documents and it's go all good we started processing right at this stage uh, it's called the AOR acknowledgement of receipt and uh, some people when there is not enough information or some documents are wrong they might reply to you that, look, you have to fix these documents or we also need these additional documents from you. And then they might ask you for those. So uh, at that stage, you'd have to reply to them and provide the additional documents. After uh, June 14th, uh, again, uh, we didn't hear anything from them. Uh, but at that stage already, uh, we were able to create an online profile where you can track your application progress. Before this acknowledgement of receipt email, you cannot track it uh, case by case basis. You can just look on generic timelines, how long it takes to get the whole thing done. Um, so uh, after you create that profile uh, over there in the Candace website, you can see, see now uh, at what stage is your application. And that tool is very useful because it actually tells you the next steps before you receive official emails telling you about those steps. So the next step that we saw on that update was background check was completed. We never received an email about that, but it was it is mentioned in the uh, in the tracker over there. 
Uh, then after the background check done, that was on August 25th, uh, we saw another update on September 14th saying that you've been scheduled for a citizenship test and it's scheduled to, be, to take place from September 24th until October 16th. So uh, then we received an official letter confirming this, but it was sent on September 22nd. So it's only two days before the test and we already knew it for uh, more than 10 days, right? So um, we already started preparing at that time. And uh, the test itself was scheduled from uh, 12 a.m. on uh, September 24th. And I took the test on 12, at 12 a.m. My wife took it at 12.30 a.m. So we didn't want to lose any time. Um, so we took it right away. And the results come out uh, at the same time. So as soon as you press submit, you will get your result. Uh, it's 20 questions. You're given 30 minutes and it's a uh, test which is it's tested online um, so you have your camera on the, everything is recorded official scores come in a few days later when they check your video and they make sure you don't cheat and your room is empty there's no other noises nobody else is present in the room uh, so those are requirements so after uh, the test um, uh, the next step is to wait for the oath letter uh, and then oath letter will say uh, when the oath ceremony will take place. So it's a citizenship oath, oath to the queen, uh, and it, there is a judge present, and they, they officially declare you citizen of Canada, and they give you the official citizenship certificate. And with that citizenship certificate, then you can apply for foreign passport, which takes another month, and then you get your foreign passport as well. Uh, so overall, how to prepare for the test, um, there is amazing uh, Discover Canada guide. You can use that as your uh, main reference point. Everything is in there. It's, I think it's like 65 pages and it's very interesting. It goes into a lot of details about dates and history of Canada, even some dark sides of the history where it talks about the residential schools, how the kids were abused, uh, about the World War I, um, when the Japanese uh, people, were f their properties was, was sold and they were not compensated for that, uh, when uh, Ukrainians were forced to go into labor camps. So those are negative uh, sides of the history and uh, obviously uh, Kande is ashamed of um, those things that happened and it wants you to know those uh, uh, stories, right? Everything that happened. So you can uh, even, they even ask this for on a test. Um, so it's very good in a way that uh, you, they talk about these things. They don't try to uh, hide it and put it away so nobody knows about it, right? In other countries where these horrible things happen, Usually people try to block this kind of information in here, it's uh, the opposite. So I really like that about, the, uh, about this book. After uh, you read that book, you can do online tests. You can just Google um, past Canadian citizenship tests. There's lots of free, free versions. You don't need to pay for it, we, we didn't. So you can just try different websites. They all have different questions. So try to pass all of the ones that you can find for free. Then there is um, like lots of videos on YouTube. I think I found one video which had 400 questions and it's a three hour long video. And so I listened to that. It was amazing, uh, lots of information. I'll put a link below as well. So that's it. Uh, it was pretty easy to prepare. I got 20 out of 20. My wife got 19 out of 20. The passing score is 15. That's pretty much it. That's everything I was going to share with you and uh, wish you have a good day thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel have a good day bye